Welcome. I'm Bonnie Dixon, president of Maple Grove Cemetery. For the past 15 years, we have invited and welcomed our families and community to gather here around the lake at the cemetery for an annual day of remembrance. It's empty. Our lake is not surrounded by loving families and friends, and it is devoid of traditional remembrance lanterns. This year's gathering is different due to the COVID epidemic. We can't physically be together. Our Remembrance Day this year is truly spiritual, a gathering, co-mingling of our spirits and energy by virtually being together at the same time to remember and celebrate our loved ones. The word celebrate isn't about joy, it's about observing paying attention and noticing the contributions of the individual. Many things now are different, except perhaps love. Your relationship with your departed loved one has changed, not ended. The memories and the stories that were their life live on in your heart and mind. We pause today together to remember the essence of the person and our mutual love and respect for them. The power of love within your spirit helps you heal and gain strength and perhaps find a new normal. Preserve and cherish those connections to their past as you realign your life and move forward. This year especially is very difficult because we are isolated by circumstances of safety and public health. Those reassuring hugs, encouraging smiles of hope, and gentle touches of humanity from supportive and mourning family and friends are masked and absent. Many are missing the give and take of sharing in person. We have to communicate our loss, grief, mourning, and support via Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, email, snail mail, and the telephone. But we do have that. Victims of previous pandemics, yellow fever in the 1790s, and the waves of Spanish flu at the turn of the century did not. They didn't have the benefit of networks of health services, food supply chains, and public programs. Although these services may have eased some of the physical need, the emotion, human condition, resulting from the loss of a loved one is universal, timeless, and painful. Sadness and grief are necessary steps to accepting the reality of loss and beginning of healing. It is said, there are things that we don't want to happen but have to accept. Things we don't want to know, but have to learn. And people we can't live without, but have to let go. This quote is far easier to say than implement. I hope this day of remembrance supports your struggle to give yourself the strength to pass to a new stage of your life. Grief can be a journey of discovery, to begin to live and love again as your loved one would want you to do. In our reflections today, let us include not only our immediate loved ones, but also the essential workers, first responders, and soldiers who have passed on in service to our community and country. Let us express our condolences to their families and gratitude for their work and sacrifice. Let us also reflect on the lives lost recently in natural disasters, floods, and tragic, senseless accidents and crimes. Those lives snuffed out with distressing, irrational suddenness. Our thoughts to each family grappling with their grief. Remembrance can be a unifying force when the sorrow and pain of loss is shared and acknowledged. 
A cemetery has many stories to tell. The Friends of Maple Grove is a vital volunteer organization that researches and tells our stories. By presenting historical programs focused on the rich social and cultural past of many of the individuals interred here. Helen Day, Senior Vice President of the Friends of Maple Grove, will give a Spirits Alive historical narration in a few moments. And Marielle Pacific, a vocalist at Past Days of Remembrance, will sing Perhaps Love at this year's Remembrance Tree a tree that has flourished with the leaves families and friends have shared. The leaves on the remembrance tree represent expressions of your love, sorrow, healing, remembering, and honoring the ones you love. But also, it is an act for yourself. It was a choice to participate and a choice to heal and restore hope for your future. Established in 1875, Maple Grove Cemetery is and continues to evolve into an ideal place to memorialize and forever rest a loved one in peace, as well as it's an inviting, comfortable place for the living to return and remember those here in perpetuity. To provide encouragement for today, I'll share an ancient quote of Marcus Aurelius. Quote, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Maple Grove Cemetery is a haven of peace and beauty in a park-like setting, a refuge of exceptional beauty nestled within New York City. Maple Grove Cemetery is a gracious, historic 65-acre rural cemetery. It is an active, non-sectarian, progressive cemetery with an enduring reputation for providing caring, sensitive services and thoughtful options to honor loved ones. Maple Grove is a place of spiritual peace and serenity that harmoniously blends old and new designs of cemeteries. The beautiful grounds make Maple Grove Cemetery an exceptional place. As a rural cemetery, the landscape includes gentle rolling hills, several gardens, a lake, a labyrinth, and a magnificent collection of trees, shrubbery, and flowers that make it a beautiful kaleidoscope throughout the four seasons. Established in 1875, Maple Grove continues to serve as an integral part of evolving Queen's communities not only as a final resting place for loved ones, but also as a place to celebrate lives past and to be a cultural resource for families and visitors. The center is the 21st century centerpiece of historic pastoral Maple Grove Cemetery. The center is a building that is both spiritual and secular. It is a link between the cemetery and the community and a place to engage visitors spiritually, physically and culturally with an atmosphere of peace and quiet dignity. The Lower Lobby Art Gallery. The lobby serves as a community space and is used as an art gallery featuring the masterpieces of local artists. It features the largest fused glass memorial window with dazzling colors and imagery. The Celebration Hall. This majestic room features a wall of windows overlooking a vibrant lake and lush gardens. Its beautiful architecture and decor provide an ideal setting for family and friends to gather before or after the gravesite ceremony. It can be set up for a reception or even a buffet or seated meal. In addition to life celebrations and funeral services, the celebration hall is used for meetings, art exhibitions and other cultural events. The family room, a comfortable room with a working fireplace and a cozy home-like ambience. The family room is a private and quiet space, making it an ideal setting for families and small groups to gather. The community room, a light-filled space equipped with teleconferencing and webcasting technology, perfect for business purposes or to allow families to share their celebration or remembrance event with those who are unable to attend in person. Memorial niche room, 
The memorial niche room is an indoor, state-of-the-art columbarium located at the center, with niches to house urns and personal items that memorialize loved ones. The beautiful glass front niches provide a dignified and attractive resting place for cremated remains. Welcome. The work of the Friends of Maple Grove Cemetery is to tell the stories of the past. We give a voice to those who lived so long ago to retell their story. Sadly, a great many stories have been forgotten by time. Often when we look to the past, it will show us that events and circumstances faced by our ancestors are being faced by us today. It shows us a cycle of life and teaches us that no matter how dark and desolate times seem to appear, civilization has survived and will rebound stronger than before. My name is Annie Weir, and I came to rest here at Maple Grove Cemetery back in the year 1890. I was a victim of a terrible affliction that was sweeping around the world, a global influenza pandemic. Starting in 1889, this deadly pandemic would eventually take the lives of over one million people and disturb life as we knew it. It was often called by an old-fashioned name for the flu, La Grippe. There were so many terrifying situations during those dark days that strangely mirror what is happening to you all today. Day after day, newspapers reported how the pandemic affected everyone globally. A daily count of those who died was given, and at times the numbers were alarmingly high. I lived in New York City at 237 Eldridge Street, in what is now known as Little Italy. And my sudden passing from the grip at the age of 40 was reported in the New York Herald on January 6, 1890. The illness knew no boundaries and attacked everyone, the rich and poor, male or female, the young and the old. No one was immune to its deadly grip. Along with my own passing that day, the newspaper article identified others who were stricken down, including a laborer, a junk man, a watchmaker, a homeless woman, a letter carrier, a fireman, and a priest to name a few. Police captains throughout the city reported the number of their officers who were stricken. The morgues were overcrowded by the extraordinary death rate. Cemetery gravediggers were overworked to exhaustion and could not keep up with the interments. It was reported that Calvary Cemetery in Queens had over 150 burials in one day. Most church choirs had to disband. In Brooklyn, the superintendent of schools was so concerned over the number of teachers and students who might have been afflicted over the Christmas vacation. He was worried that the schools would be empty and might have to be closed. The newspapers printed grim figures coming in from the neighboring states of New Jersey and Connecticut, but there were reports from other states across America and from Europe as well. The United States steamer Enterprise arrived in Plymouth, England, with most of the officers and crew stricken with influenza. Many were taken to naval hospitals. It was reported that members of the English Parliament in London were suffering from the grip. In Germany, the Dowager Empress Augusta, the mother of the Emperor William, was stricken along with two princesses. Many German businesses were suspended and schools were being converted into hospitals. In France, the number of dead recorded on January 5th had reached 427. In Spain, the young king and the Infanta Isabel were reported to be ill. Many tried to relieve their sufferings with all sorts of cures. One was the use of quinine, a medication used to treat malaria. The height of the pandemic was from October 1889 to December of 1890, with deadly resurgences well into the year 1895. It would be the last great pandemic of that century. The human population has been affected by pandemics throughout history. It brings out the best and the worst in human nature. But with fortitude and hope, the world has survived and life would return to normal. Sadly, those pandemics would be forgotten until it suddenly returns. It will pass as it has done before. We only need to look to history to understand what has happened over and over. Thank you.
think we might be wishing on the same bright star. And when the night wind starts to sing a lonesome lullaby, it helps to think we're sleeping underneath the same big sky. the storm it exists to give you comfort it is there to keep you warm and in those times of trouble when you are most alone the memory of love will bring you home perhaps love is love an open door it invites you to come closer it wants to show you more and even if you lose yourself and don't know what to do the memory of love will see you through oh love to some to some as strong as steel for some a way of living for some a way to feel and some say love is holding on and some say letting go and some say love is everything some say love is like the ocean full of conflict full of pain like a fire when it's cold outside or thunder when it rains if I should live forever and all my dreams come true my memories of love will be of you
conflict full of pain like a fire when it's cold outside or thunder when it rains if i should live